Hey everyone, it's Byron again. The last time we talked, we were in Romans chapter 1. We started at verse 22, or started talking, or we need to start start at verse 22 today. In verse 22, Romans chapter 1, verse 22, we, we read, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. So we want to ask the question and continue to refer back to who exactly is it that Paul's talking to. And if we go back to verse 18, we'll see near the end of verse 18, men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So we've previously explained what that would mean. And now we're down to seeing some of the fruit, I guess you would say, or some of the things that these men did. The first mention in 23 of something that was evidence is they changed the glory of of an uncorruptible God into an image made like unto a corruptible man. And I, it's right there that I'm <clears throat> I'm wanting to make a point. What are these images of corruptible man? And let me just share with you some of my thoughts. Today when we look around us, we see statues. And we, we at times we see statues of men. Not far from here there's a statue of a prior governor that was the governor of Louisiana. His name was Huey Long, and there's a large statue of him close by. Uh, in Washington, D.C., there's a George Washington Memorial. I think it's called Masonic Memorial or something like that. And there's a statue of George Washington in there. And then if you looked at the Lincoln Memorial, you'll see a statue of the Lincoln Memorial. You'll see a statue of Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., Looking back at the text saying, what does the scripture say, or what saith the scripture, they changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into the image made like unto a corruptible man. So there's some examples that we can say are modern day images of corruptible man. But these things are displayed and sometimes people th- say, well, might say, well, this is patriotism and, and, and I understand that side. But I also need to understand the scriptural side. And the scriptures talk about people that made these images. We also have Mount Rushmore. And we have Stone Mountain, Georgia is another example. Now, in order to understand who these people are, or the side of the house, as you as I would say, these people are and where they come from, we have to understand a little bit of the foundations of the Bible and the scripture. And we have to look way back to make sure we're seeing stuff when it happened. And I have selected to go back into Genesis. Because in Genesis, you're going to learn some very basic things that occurred that make a difference or that matter in all Scripture. And the first place I want to start was Genesis 3. Now in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve were tempted by the serpent, and they took of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And at that point, I want to pick up and see what happened at the point that they chose to take of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So let's look in Genesis 3, verse number 7. Now this is just afterwards that they had taken of that fruit. And the Bible reads like this, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Before I get too long into this, I want to tell you that this this whole Bible makes sense from beginning to the end if we understand what we're talking about here. Now, this is a man and wife, Adam and Eve, the first two people, in fact, as recorded, the only two people that are on the face of the earth at this time. When we look at they knew that they were naked, you might be drawn to think, well, it's a physical sense and, and quite you know, it very possibly was a physical sense because it shows that they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. But a man and a wife in a marriage normally don't mind being naked in front of each other. So seeing that they were naked might have a, a bigger meaning. And, and what I want to do is let's go to Revelation. And I just want to read a verse in Revelation that talks about nakedness. And it's in Revelation 3, and it's dealing with the church of Laodicea. Okay, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, here's what we read. And these are the words of Jesus written in red. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. 
and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. So this verse in Revelation is talking about being clothed, so that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. It also talks about anoint your eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And I believe that this is talking about spiritual sight and spiritual clothes. White raiment being the raiment that Christ would put on you after being washed in his blood. So let's go back in Genesis 3 and let's look at the Adam and Eve story a little bit from a spiritual perspective in that it's going to tell us something. Now back into Genesis 3, 7, it, it states, And the eyes of them were both opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons. Okay, so let's just make a note that they sewed fig leaves. Now fig leaves come from a plant, and that's something that, you know, it reproduces from the fruit of a tree. Now later, in this same chapter, we see God enters in and does something for them. After he has pronounced the curses on them, in verse 21, let's, let's read what, what happens in verse 21. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. There in verse 7, they made something for themselves and they made it from the fruit of a tree or leaves from a fig tree. The Lord later covered them with a coat of skin. Now, a coat of skin would be from an animal. It would have to, to come from an animal. So one might conclude that the very first animal's death was right here in verse 20 of Genesis. But it also shows us a larger picture in that obviously the Lord did not think that something from a plant or fig leaves was a practical or worthy covering. And it, he had to do something to cover them with skins coats of skin. 